hits the red button. All right. Good morning, and again, thank you guys for letting me have the time to, to talk to you guys this morning. Uh, this is my capstone project for my superintendent's certification, and we were asked to do work on a, a project that uh, we felt uh, uh, was going to benefit our district in which we worked in, and something that uh, I'm pretty passionate about, I know we've talked a lot about in our, in our level meetings, is how to support uh, career and technical education in Oldham County. Uh, before I begin, I want to thank some, uh, some people for their time and effort, because I obviously did not do this alone. Um, two of you are in the room, but uh, obviously Mr. Deves, secondary level director for his support and time and giving me the time today to take away from our meeting to present this. Uh, Mr. Matt Watkins, uh, principal at the Arvin Center, who I hounded uh, quite a bit and I appreciate your time and, and support in, in looking into this and provide me a lot of the data that I was able to use. Uh, Mr. McCarg, interim superintendent for uh, being my mentor this year, and uh, Mr. Randy Davis, chief financial officer, who I uh, also hounded quite a bit to, to get budgetary information. So uh, the, the first thing I wanted to look at is, is just kind of understanding why I chose this topic. And career and technical education is important. As we know as secondary uh, principals, our, our, our most important mission is to prepare kids uh, for what's next. Uh, high school is not the end. It, it's just the next step in their lives. And CTE provides them. Because I tell everyone, whether a kid's going to college or not, they're eventually going to have to join a career at some point. And our ability to provide them uh, opportunities uh, for career paths um, and as well as college paths is so important that they have the skills and knowledge necessary uh, to, to enter the next stage in their life. This is shared, this uh, was shared uh, by Secretary of Education Arne Duncan in a February 2011 speech in which he, he talked about how CT has for, for too long been ignored and that it is our responsibility, uh, backing up what I said, to make sure that, uh, that schools and states across, across the country are supporting uh, CTE for a successful transition of, of our students. Uh, backing that up uh, was uh, literature that I had um, studied um, and where businesses uh, across the country um, are specifically looking for better skilled workers um, that, that are needed in a lot of different fields, including not just industry, but also biomedical, uh, in that they're finding that there's a shortage of qualified workers uh, coming out of, out of secondary schools and asking that high schools do a better job of preparing them. Uh, just this year in January alone, three different governors um, in Virginia, Oregon, and Maryland um, have made it a point to stress the importance of CT education in their own states. Uh, so a wide, wide sampling across the country there of understanding why CT is so important. So start off by kind of looking at the evolution of CT in Oldham County Schools. So for most of us, kind of a walk down memory lane in terms of, the, of, of this evolution. As we know, uh, way back when, before Mr. Watkins took over, CT was a very traditional uh, program where it was strictly for kids who were not going to go uh, to college. It was just, what do we do with them? Here you go, learn a skill, and hopefully you can find a job. Uh, but starting in 2009, 2010, uh, it was kind of the beginning of, of, of a, a new idea and a new approach to CTE um, education in Oldham County. Uh, in that year, we had the, the three programs, or the four programs, uh, offered two sessions, but between the three high schools and Butner Alternative, only had 137 students attending. Uh, in 2010-2011, uh, the Arvin Center attempted four sessions, uh, but found that it was ineffective. Uh, even though the, the idea was to provide more uh, opportunities for kids, it, it, was, it just didn't work well because of transportation um, and the, the lack of instructional time and trying to bus everybody back and forth in that shorter time span. But it did grow to 250 students. 2011-2012, we had the transformation uh, of becoming, uh, adding new programs with Junior Guard, EMT, and Young Adult uh, Transition Program, and uh, moved from four sessions to three sessions, the current, current schedule we're on more or less now, uh, to provide those opportunities for students uh, that more instructional time within the Arvin Center schedule. In 12-13, uh, began the research into the STEM program, 
thirteen fourteen, that approval was granted. And then last year, we had the first uh, first year of STEM with seventy two spots uh, being split among our, our three high schools. And at that time, last year, we had one full time engineering math teacher uh, with one part time science teacher. Looking now to this year and beyond, uh, this year obviously we've had our second year of STEM. The staff has grown to two and a half teachers, and the total Arvin Center enrollment is now up to 430 students for this year. Uh, and then obviously the board approved the multi-million dollar renovation to the existing building to meet the growing demands. Looking ahead to this, or this upcoming year and the 17-18 school year, uh, Arvin Center is going to have four full-time STEM teachers. Uh, it's IT is moving to computer science, and the projected enrollment next year is going to be over 500 students uh, with uh, breaking ground on the renovation updates hopefully taking place next year. So understanding all that and seeing the growth, uh, you know, obviously the district has made the financial commitment to the, the physical needs of the building, um, but the question still remains, uh, where will the funding come from in order to provide the necessary resources and staff uh, to support a, a high-quality uh, top-notch CTE program for our Oldham County students. The data sources uh, in collection, I began by looking at over that, that period from 2009-2010 uh, through the next two projected uh, school years. Uh, you can see that the enrollment um, continues to increase from 137 students, as I said earlier in 2009-10, uh, to looking ahead to the 17-18 school year of a projected enrollment of 550 students. At this point, uh, the, the programs have doubled and look to stay at eight for the time being. Uh, you can see staffing um, has increased from four to ten and a half, and classified staff has, has really jumped, obviously, from, from zero in those first two years in my study to nine uh, for looking ahead to the 17-18 school year. Uh, the budget allocation that the board provides, Mr. Watkins, um, has stayed pretty steady, and that, that money, that $30,000, is just for basic operational cost. Um, that's like his copying cost, his teacher technology, um, office supplies, cleaning supplies, custodial needs. Um, so that, that money, that 30000 is not for students. It's just for running the building. Any questions on, on that? I kind of know it's a lot. And so staffing comes from the board? Staff, we have, well, <coughs> staff, staffing comes completely from the board. We're going to get to that here in a second. Good question. Um, the next, next source was looking ahead to next year's projections uh, for, uh, for enrollment at the Arvin Center and looking at different programs. And I'm not going to read all these to you, but the one thing that kind of stands out uh, that's going to be important later on is that you can see, as you look at the, the different, uh, different enrollments uh, of the programs from North, OC, and South, um, is that they pretty much follow the, the, the class or the school size. Um, OC obviously has the most spots or takes up the most spots followed by south and then north. And you can see that automotive, biomedical, uh, culinary, and sports medicine, same pattern, uh, junior guard, uh, IT, computer science, and then engineering. All right, so if you take, uh, take the projected enrollment for next year, the 16-17 school year, uh, the student population at Arvin Ar Ar Center looks like this, and this does not include our early college numbers. Mr. Watkins is still working working on those numbers along with Mr. Deves. Uh, Oldham County High School takes up 233 students uh, in the Arvin Center next year. South Oldham, 176, and North Oldham, 64 right now at these early projections. Okay. Uh, and analyzing that data that we just went through, the Arvin Center uh, over the last seven years has experienced a 214% increase and student enrollment from 137 to 430. Obviously, looking at next year at 500, that increases even more. Uh, in that same period, staffing has only increased by 87.5%. Uh, as you all know, we're staffed at a student-to-teacher ratio of 22.9 to 1. Uh, if you look at next year's projected enrollment, uh, the Arvin Center is actually staffed at 2.2 additional teachers uh, above the, the staffing ratio would normally allow. And that's one thing I thought that um, in talking to Mr. Watkins, I assume their staffing would be a lot lower uh, than, than it probably needed to be, but it's actually um, at, at a good spot and obviously has a couple more teachers and um, we'll come back and uh, have something to say about that later. But um, So staffing wise, I think, and even Matt has, has said to me in talking with them that he feels like they're in a good spot for right now. Questions on that for anyone? 
Is that changing a little bit for next year where, where high schools will provide funding for some of that? Or did I dream that? Not for staffing. Not for, Not for staffing. staffing. Not for staffing. But for students. For students. That's, okay. Yeah. Uh, the problem arises that the Arvin Center is not currently funded like the other high schools. Uh, the Arvin Center, as I said, is not staffed based on the student-to-teacher ratio, and the Arvin Center does not receive SEEK funding. Uh, instead, the Arvin Center is completely funded out of the general budget. Uh, Mr. Davis said that the, the estimated expense for next year's uh, cost of the Arvin Center is going to be $281,500 uh, to run uh, for the total operating expenses. That includes budget, staffing, and, and general upkeep and so forth. Uh, for the for next school year, so that's quite a bit of money that comes uh, straight out of the general budget. Does the Perkins funding just go to schools? It does not go to the Arvin Center. Ben, Ar Arvin Center Sir gets um, mm -hmm. okay. So, in looking at all the all that data, what what does what do the results show us? Obviously, the Arvin Center continues to grow at an increasingly rapid pace. Uh, under the current structure, the Arvin Center is not directly funded like other schools, like our schools within Oldham County School District. And obviously, in order to sustain a viable and credible CT program, uh, sustainable sources of funding must be provided to support the Arvin Center's growth. So in looking at possible solutions to that, uh, four different things came up, and I know we were kind of just talking about it in, in general here in a, in a second, but or earlier. Uh, first, increasing the property tax to generate more revenue. Um, the amount that we're allowed to increase every year, that only takes care of our cost of living. Um, that really would not provide any additional revenue for just the Arvin Center because it generally pays for raises and, and salaries and so forth like that. So that is not a, a, a definitely a, a very good option. As we were talking earlier, seeking grant opportunities, and as we were talking, as Mr. Deeson said before we started in my presentation, uh, the problem with grant opportunities is twofold. One, it's just a one source, one-time source of funding, uh, which isn't sustainable. But secondly, that we do not, we don't qualify for a lot of the grant opportunities because of the socioeconomic uh, makeup of Oldham County. Matt and I have talked about that in the past, uh, just this week, I believe, about how, you know, looking at grants, we just don't qualify because of uh, the, the makeup of, of Oldham County. We cut expenses uh, across the district, and obviously those, those are tough decisions to make and have to ask, uh, you know, some tough questions and uh, potentially cut programs that, that hurt kids. Um, or four, uh, share, share our SEEK funding and staffing allocations between the three high schools with the Arvin Center. So, Mr. Griffin, kind of what, what you had talked about. Okay. So, our recommendation, um, my recommendation would be that uh, obviously the SEEK funding, um, that is designed when it came into play with CARA in 1990 uh, to provide equality amongst all, amongst all school districts and schools, and that money is supposed to follow kids. So the SEEK funding should be shared between the three high schools with the Arvin Center. Uh, the home high schools should share their SEEK student allocation. Uh, and I came up with this by dividing the per pupil allotment by three for each student who attends the Arvin Center, thinking that a kid spends two periods at the Arvin Center, which is most of uh, Craig's on a six period, OC and South are on a seven period day. Uh, but just easy math, it's a third of their day. So you take the 139 34 we receive per student on our SEEK formula, divide that by three, so $46.45 per student. So right now, at our projected enrollment, um, OC, multiply that by 233, we provide Mr. Watkins $10,800. Uh, South, 176, uh, just a little over 8,000. And North High, at 64 students, uh, just under 3,000. Um, and this would provide Mr. Watkins uh, the money to, to provide support student needs uh, within the building uh, to to provide it, or to purchase uh, uh, instructional resources, uh, more technology for student use. Questions on that? So, uh, in conclusion, this proposal to share resources between the high schools and the Arvin Center is a fair and equitable approach to all involved. Uh, looking into the future, I, future, the idea of sharing staffing is something we may need to look at uh, once once that becomes an issue and. Just like we're doing with the SEEK formula, uh, could be a necessity uh, as as the Arvin Center continues to grow. Would sponsorships be the same as grant opportunities? Are we looking at those things too, like Rawlings or Walmart, or when the industry continues to grow in Oldham County? Because I know Jefferson County does that, but I didn't know if that was a grant right. or a sponsorship or they were different. Right. Well, I know I know in uh, 
Mr. Deese or Matt could talk about it, but I know we looked into partnerships um, with like UPS, yeah. um, and then I know we're kind of doing something with UVL, but who else besides UPS? UPS, AT&T, we're yeah. talking to Brownsboro right now, Dow Point is a big one. Okay. Um, but those are usually in one to three year increments. Okay. Right. And so what we have to say is, okay, you get them for three, and then we gotta see if they'll read out. Um, I think what's important last night is, um, Mr. Deese and I were at our award ceremony and uh, talking to some parents. I think as we're kind of starting out and we're still really growing with CT looks like uh, for Oldham County and the opportunities that, that the Arvin Center provides. We had some parents last or a parent last night talk about the UL program and how wonderful it's been for her daughter. And Mr. Deese's comment to them was how, how much UL appreciate that. So I think the more we get out of the county and into Jefferson County and surrounding counties, um, and I know we have a great reputation, but actually put action with that reputation, that's gonna help us uh, in terms of getting more sponsorships and uh, more, uh, more endowments with people, with the different companies. The other part too, um, we're finding out, when we go to reapply, they wanna see their money go to something new. Um, they don't wanna right. keep funding the same thing over and over because it's a startup, it's one time yes. money, they don't, they don't wanna have to sustain something, that's yes. not their intention, so. Well, it makes sense what you said about socioeconomic because Jefferson County has so many of those schools with those populations that are 90% well, in some right? so the, the, the in the location, too. Yeah. The business right there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and, you know, people see Oldham County as being very high socioeconomic, which we are. Nobody can, even our small population is a drop in the bucket in most places. Um, the other issue, though, is I found out this year, when you increase your tax rate, you also decrease your funding from the state. Right. Your state funding doesn't stay the same when you increase your taxes. They give you less money back. Yeah, it's, it's an equitable equation. That right. So you don't it's get still it all. more overall, or is it almost? It is, but it's not enough to. It otherwise, makes no sense. You gotta almost taxes. do a double. You know. Okay. Yeah. When you take the compensatory rate and just bump it, there's not a huge. Right. There's not this big windfall of money. We raise a, a, a good chunk of it goes out to everybody else. What we raise here stays here, but it also takes away what they give us, which the state tax dollars give us and goes to somebody else. Likewise. What are your thoughts on, I just want to know part of it, what are your thoughts on sharing staffing in the future? What's your concerns? Because right now, if you did 22.9 to 500, that'd be like 221 teachers. And you have if we're on the same staffing formula as the high schools, it would be almost 21 teachers. And you don't have 21 teachers right now. So I'm just wondering. About sharing staffing? Yeah. Using the staffing formula. It's kind of hard. As much as that would, as that would, that would hurt where we are now, it's kind of hard for me to argue that that's not reasonable considering our kids at that, you know, different times of the day are not in our building. Yes. So it's kind of hard for me to argue against that, really. We've done it with um, with Lynn, and we did it this year with uh, with Miss Burns. The thing, though, for us, it's easy to get from the Arvin Center to us. I think that becomes more uh, problematic for you guys, where it's not walking across the parking lot on a nice day. Oh, wait a second. All right. Well, so I think, you think there's, there's, two, there's two ways to do well, it. Well, either yeah. that or lowering your staffing. I was thinking raising numbers. Your I was raising thinking your staff. of people. Right. You could do both. Yeah. You, could, you could share. Either but I was, thinking, I was thinking more of making your allocation at the high schools 23.2 or 23.3. Oh, okay. And then taking the, taking that and trying to create one or two teacher slots out of that. To the thing is, it would, it would be, it would be a, a, a floating number because I think every year would change based off of how many students you're sending to, to the Arvin Center. So I think too is you rebuild schools, which you know eventually South's gonna have to be rebuilt. Mm -hmm. And all teachers put their career center in the school. That's what all, almost every school is doing yeah. now that you visit. You have one part, of, instead of a central location, have each part in a school, to me, that, and that makes it much easier to do, I think. I don't know where the district's well, on, the, position on that. The only the point of the position yeah. on that is there are quite a few schools that do it. There's pluses and minuses yeah. to it. Um, one of the pluses is you can really grow within that building. Yes. But you really have a hard time growing it outside the building. Good. And the other, the other hard part is you increase your busing um, to and from the schools. Um, 
because you're going three different schools in multiple routes. Um, so you lose the whole climate of. Um, you're saying if, like a certain program only existed in one of the three right. high schools. Like if you put engineering at one school and okay. biomedical at another, then um, and I think now that they've increased and done this renovation, they're putting money there. Um, I think the other thing too, I mean, I know this is maybe kind of far-fetched and obviously with the renovations that are just not even started yet that it wouldn't be enough, but when does the Arvin Center become more of its own standalone school where kids take almost all their classes there? I mean, I know, take their math you know, and their well, I know they're taking more core content courses um, through STEM and biomed and so forth, but you know, when does it become that's the kids' home high school? Especially mm-hmm. the last two years of high school, mm-hmm. I mean, say you're special. Right? Yeah, I think about just adding the, the more um, academic type courses there, you're moving to that, it's just, you gotta make it big enough to do that. This renovation will not make it big enough. No, absolutely not. This renovation, that's the thing, it seems like we never do a renovation that lasts over five or 10 years for some reason. We were at capacity. The day after we opened. Yes, exactly, (laughs) that makes no sense. The only one who who has capacity is. It's the one. Yeah, questions for me. Guys, thank you. I really appreciate your time. Great job, Mr. Travis. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.